This is generating G code for your D3D Universal Pen Plotter using open source tools. An open source ecology tutorial playlist by Melanie. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to make that simple Sierpinski triangle you see on the left or right. I'm not sure. Um, as you can see, simple line art is design. This way, I can show you how we export the G code from a simple line drawing that maybe you create in Inkscape. All right, so I already have Inkscape open and I have it open. I used new from template to get my um, 120 by 150 area so that I know that the drawing that I'm making is gonna plot perfectly fine on the D3 Universal. And I just wanna show this tool here, it's the Create Stars and Polygon tool, and we want to create a triangle. So we make the corners three. And normally a triangle would show up, but I would actually have been messing around. Because I was messing around, this happened. Okay. Now I have it back to a triangle. So so when you make these polygons you can kind of do like so uh, by clicking this middle thing and then when you come back it'll be just like that um, so in order to get rid of it you just need to do like so All right, and it looks like maybe I need to rotate this a little bit so when I double click I can kind of rotate and now I have a triangle. It's a bit more like what I want. So I single click it and I click the lock because I want to um, maintain my aspect ratio and I make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so here is my... And let's say that... Well, let's just keep going. Okay, so in order to make a Sierpinski triangle, it's a simple pattern. So I control seed, and when I custom mode to custom mode, it automatically kind of lines things up for me. And now I have my first. And then as you know, this pattern repeats. So I select all, and I control V, and I have my next layer of CRPNSKIs. <laughs> That's probably not the mathematical way. Now, you know, maybe I need to resize a little bit, so I'm doing that again. We still have the lock on, because I don't want to run out of room so fast. Okay, I, I want a little bit bigger Sierpinski than that. Okay, so there we go, and then I'm control seeing again, and putting my Sierpinskis. Yay, so how fun, right? I have my cool um, and this would plot as as we saw. It, it would look something like this. Um, so, how do I save this as G code? So, you know, um, first, before I save things as G code, I like to save them as SVG. I just think this is a good idea. You never know when you might want to make a change to it later. When when you save it as G-code, um, that's not something that you're going to be able to open back up into Inkscape. So it's good to save as an SVG first. And if you're planning on sharing it with others, um, it's also a good idea to maybe even save as a PNG or JPG as well. And, and that way, people will know what they're kind of getting into when um, they can look at your image file. Because once again, um, well the SVG file is kind of big um, and depending on you know where you're uploading it to, you may need a PNG file in order to show. Anyways, the point is, is that you can save this multiple formats um, before you get to the G-code step. Once you have it as SVG, you know, um, you can do all those other saves later, but um, fortunately for for us, we we already have the G-Code Tools plugin. All right, so if you don't see what I see in the next step, 
it's because you haven't downloaded G Code Tools, which is a CNC Club extension. And um, I have a video on how to download extensions, so if you do need to download that extension, perhaps that video will help you. But it's really as simple as the following um, once you have it. The three axis G Code plo the, the G Code Plotter G Code extension. You're going to select that from the Save As menu. And then you're going to click Save. And then this G Code Plot uh, menu is going to show up, which is, a, is another extension that you're going to want to download. It's the G Code Plot extension. Okay. If you don't have it already, right? Which I have it already. So I have this is 150 by 150. Now, um, this is fine. Um, as you know, ours is 120 by 150. Um, the one thing that you don't want is for this to be smaller than what you have. It will throw an error. In fact, let's uh, let's show you what that looks like. So let's say that um, I didn't have a template and my bed was only 100 by 100 and so I had this set and by the way this isn't magical so if you have a bed that's um, 100 by 100 and you set this to 200 by 200 um, that's not going to do you any favors because you, you your your art is not it's it, the machine is going to try to print it it's not going to do you any favors so make sure that um, your template and, and this is both set within what you need uh, w w the boundaries of your print so if I tried to save this with a smaller bed, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get an error like this, okay? And so if you see something like this, uh, even though it says, yeah, you're not going to save your G code, and that'll be why. Okay, so let's do it quick. So let's put that to 150. 50. There's nothing wrong with having your template smaller than your print bed. And <coughs> pardon me, you're going to want to have this drawing, there's cutting, there's custom. You're going to want it for drawing for a pen plotter. Um, our pen plotter, it's using a ballpoint pen, so the precision we want is this uh, zero 010. Uh, very likely you can use that too if you have a D3D. Um, we have a lift height. You can set this to four. You can set this to five. It's really your preference and what turns out to work best for you. Um, the parking Z height. Uh, we also have that at four, um, and so that's like four millimeters up, right? So it means that when it uh, the lift is when you, know, you have your pen and, and it's like lift, lift, right? And the parking is when it's parked. And um, the movement speed, 40, I think, is the default. I didn't move that. Draw speed, 35, 35. Um, if you found that maybe it just looked like slowing down the pen would help you in any way, then you could adjust this, right? So um, you're going to want to set these horizontal and vertical alignments to left unless you have some reason not to. But that means that um, the the left is w where things are um, expected to align. And then I didn't change anything here, but and I also recommend handling any cross hatching and such um, in 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 your 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 SVG itself. And then this is where you could set a tool offset, but I don't set one because I handle it by um, restricting the area of my art. All right, so those are the G-code plot settings, and when I click OK, you know what? <laughs> I thought I was in my plotter template at the start of this, but I must not be. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> that's funny. Um 
so I'm I'm gonna have to manually do this, which is hilarious. But uh, all right, we're gonna do 120 by 150. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I filmed this tutorial a couple of times and. I thought I had, um, I thought I was using my template, but I was actually just in the default. But it's an easy thing to fix. I just save and resize. It's an SVG, yay, you know, um, so we're going to try one more time. Save as G code. Alright. But see, now you know what happens if you make a mistake. It's really easy to resolve. Oh, and by the way, the settings kind of like stay there uh, after you set them. Alright, so I have my G code. And let's verify that, right? So when we make some G code and we want to see what it's like. Well, I've shown you guys in CViewer a lot. I could show you what's on the. Um, OSE Linux, but yeah, let's just go ahead and do it this way. Um, Alright, here's my new G code. And now we can kind of look and see what the experience would be like. Cute. That would be exactly what your uh, pin plotter would do. So that's taking a civil line art and making it pen potable. Thanks for watching.